Well, it's such a pleasure to be here with District 6270. Thank you. I really appreciate the invitation. Thank you for that kind introduction. Uh, but a very special thank you for all the work you're doing to help our Rotary Foundation. All the donors that are getting rewards and getting appreciation. It's really so relevant to say thank you because you're what's making a difference around the world. Don't ever forget that. We can only do what we do because of your help. I know you're on a million dollar journey. I wish you all the best. And I know with your commitment and dedication, you'll make sure we achieve that. So I'm here today to talk a little about our Rotary Foundation, because you have to start with our number one priority as an organization, which is to eliminate, eradicate polio off the face of the earth. We've made incredible progress. I know you all remember, we used to have 350,000 people a year getting polio. This year, 133 so far. Yes, we're not there. We're not at zero, but we've made amazing progress because of you and your support. Yeah, we have partners in WHO, CDC, UNICEF. They help us. They certainly do a lot with us. And we couldn't do it without them. But even they will tell you it's because of Rotary's drive that we continue this process and we continue to make sure we will get to zero because that's what we promised our children. We promised the children of the world we would get rid of polio no matter how long it takes. And that's what we have to do. And that's what we will do because we're Rotarians. We know that in Africa in August, WHO certified Nigeria and therefore the continent of Africa while polio virus free. That's a fantastic celebration. And and a special congratulations to the Rotarians in Nigeria. They worked hard day after day for years to make sure that every single child received the vaccination. And they went to some very difficult areas. I'm sure you know the Boko Haram controls the Northeast section of the country. Uh, so the Rotary had to go in with the army, but they did and they still got to every child. So they still were able to immunize and have no cases for that four years so we could certify them. So Africa is now wild polio virus free. Pakistan, Afghanistan, still a challenge. We still have work to do, but guess what? We're gonna do it. And again, we have committed Rotarians there on the ground who are just so committed. They want their country to be free of the wild polio virus, just like all the other countries. And, and they'll get there, they'll, they'll get it done. One Rotarian met with the Taliban a number of years ago to ask them to please stop shooting so we could immunize all the children, including your children. Of course, you have to explain Rotary, who we are, what we do. We're non-political, we're non-religious. We just want to help your children. Guess what? The Taliban said, okay. They stopped shooting for two days and we were able to immunize all the children. That began a new era of making sure we got the job done. This year, COVID-19 has obviously frustrated the process and we had to stop for a while, but we're back now doing the immunizations. And we did one day, we did special communities that we knew we had breakouts of polio and we did 756,000 children in a couple of days. We partnered with the United um, Arab Emirates to work with Pakistan. I mean, that's an interesting combination of countries. Only Rotary could put that together. But with their help, we were able to get there and immunize all those children. And so we'll get it done. Yeah, it's Pakistan, Afghanistan, the only two endemic countries left both working hard, committed by government, committed by the, the army. The head of the army in Pakistan is in charge of the program. So, And he told us that he believes we're gonna get to zero next year. We don't know that'll happen. But the fact that he's running the program and he wants to see that, that's a great way for us to move forward. So COVID-19 slows us down, but doesn't stop us. And nothing stops Rotary, let's face it, we know what we are and who we are. And Rotarians, when we get it on our minds, we're gonna get something done, we get it done. COVID-19 came along and back in March, the Rotary Foundation started getting requests from all over the world. 
we want to do projects to help COVID-19. How do we get grants, et cetera? So the foundation put $3 million from the World Fund into the Disaster Fund, which enabled us to start producing disaster grants for COVID-19 projects. And we were able to do that quickly, $25,000 a district, but we were able to turn it around and we produced some $7.4 million of grants from the Disaster Fund. Then we said, all right, we're, we're gonna run out of the Disaster Fund, but we have global grants. So a lot of districts, clubs would apply for global grants. And we have done so far about $24 million of global grants just for COVID-19 projects, countries around the world. So we're over 30 million now in COVID-19 projects. We are relevant to what's happening today. And that's an important fact for Rotarians to understand that we are relevant for what goes on today. And we need to always be responding for today's world to make sure that we can help clubs to get the job done that they want to do and that their communities need. And we do that. And Rotary and our foundation continues to do so much. It's just, to me, it makes me proud uh, sitting on the trustees and seeing that we spent the time, not only with all the challenges we have, but then we said, we got to do some new things. And we agreed after a couple of years of discussion, unanimously, the board of Rotary International and the foundation agreed to add a seventh area of focus for the environment. Yeah, we, there was concerns, you know, is this political, is it not? Well, we're not taking the political side of it. We just know that our planet needs some help. So why doesn't Rotary start to provide an ability for Rotary clubs to help their own communities and communities around the world to improve our environment, whether it's helping to pick up the plastic refuse or it's about planting mangroves, planting trees. There's so much we can do without talking about climate change. Just, we know there's a problem. My country is gonna be underwater in 50 years because the temperature's rising and the water is rising because of it and our coral reefs are dying. We're gonna be underwater. Uh, we know that hurricanes are getting stronger. So our environment is changing. So what can we do? So next week at the foundation trustee meeting, we're gonna discuss the details of this seventh area focus. And we hope to get that published and out to Rotary Clubs as soon as possible afterwards uh, so that we can start doing global grants for environmental projects starting July 1st of next year. So we're almost there, just working out the details now, but we'll, we'll get them done. We also made some uh, interesting changes in structure. We and the board got together and said, we need to pair our trustees with board members. So we have more of a team and that on every team of the zones around the world, there's a trustee to be there as well, to provide just as a resource, to provide assistance where districts and the director need assistance from the foundation. So we've gone through that process and we're paired. My zone is pretty easy because I'm, I'm in this two zones that have two directors and I'm in the same zone as one of them. So very easy but there's 15 trustees and 17 directors. So a couple of trustees have to do, take care of a few zones, uh, but we don't mind doing that. That's good because now we can hopefully be more relevant and more of a part of the team for the zones to help with all foundation issues. We have had a challenge this year with the World Fund. You know, with all the COVID-19 projects, I mentioned over $30 million, but there's everything else still going on. So we still get lots of applications for global grants. And what happens? Well, we actually had a shortfall in the World Fund come the very beginning of July, of June. And therefore, went the month of June, we weren't able to do global grants. By the time July 1st came along, we had over 800 applications for global grants. And we're catching up and getting through them and getting them in this year's World Fund. But we're concerned about running short again. So our foundation, our trustees, have a couple of subcommittees that are meeting to talk about what we can do. One on the revenue side, one on the expense side. So how can we reduce expenses? Are we gonna have to cut employees? Because the more we can cut, then more we put into the World Fund, then we can keep doing global grants. 
And that's really important. We need to support our clubs around the world as they do the service. And on the revenue side, what else can we do to get more revenue coming in, more donations? I mean, Rotarians around the world are the mass majority of what we collect is from Rotarians. So we, we're talking more to Rotaractors now. How do we get the Rotaractors to consider every Rotaractor every year? And by the way, every Rotarian isn't contributing. Let's get after every Rotarian and ask them, do something, just what you could afford. Every Rotary Club, do something, what you could afford to support our Rotary Foundation so that we can make sure that we can continue our global grants um, throughout the year and don't have to stop for a time of months during the early part of next year. So that, that is a concern. We also are changing a number of policies regarding Rotaract uh, for the simple reason we all know that we the Council legislation elevated Rotaract clubs to be members of Rotary International, just like a Rotary Club. That was April of last year. And since then, we've been changing a lot of different policies, procedures, uh, so kind of making sure that Rotaractors are able to do what Rotarians can do. And a lot has been done. Significant change. The Foundation has also made those changes. And the last couple of meetings, we recommended to districts and to clubs to include Rotaractors on your committees, whatever the committees are, certainly on foundation committees in the district, make sure there's a Rotaractor there so they can give input and also take that message back to the Rotaract clubs for us. We also want Rotaractors to serve on international committees. We have a Rotaract committee of Rotary International, and we're going to have Rotaractors from there sit on the trustee meetings uh, the beauty of our virtual world today is that we can do that, that we can bring them in, sit with us, and give us their perspective so that we really can share ideas with our young professionals, which is just so important that we do. Um, so we're doing that. Uh, we have a couple of Rotaractors who will sit on the trustee meetings, and there's a trustee who will sit as liaison to the Rotaract committee, which we haven't done before either. So that's continues to work well as well. Um, and I, I just kind of like to close with a story. You know, there's a program in Ro the Rotary Foundation, the VTT, Vocational Training Team, and it's been a very popular team. A little pause this year because of COVID-19 and travel restrictions. But vocational travel, vocational training team goes from one country with a group of experts to another country to bring their expertise to that country that may either need training or just need assistance. Well, last year there was a VTT from India where 17 surgeons, they're all Rotarians, they gave up their practice for two weeks. And, you know, when a surgeon gives up their practice for two weeks, that's significant dollars that they basically have given up in order to do the work of Rotary. But they gave it up for two weeks, 17 surgeons, there's also about 12 or 13 volunteers to come and help them. So there's about 30 people all together. Went from India to Madagascar, a little island country off the coast of Africa, on the south coast. And went there. They spent eight days doing surgical procedures. And I, I wanted to see what a VTT was like. I really wanted to get a feel for what we do. And is this a good program for our foundation? So I spent two days of the eight days with them. And every morning we would all have breakfast together. Every evening we would have dinner together and talk about the day, um, what transpired. And I noticed every morning there was a few surgeons weren't there. And every night there was a few surgeons, usually the same ones, who weren't there. Why? Because they went in early. They wanted to get started early and do whatever they could. And they stayed late because they wanted to do as many patients as they could. In eight days, they did 3,500 procedures. I mean, that to me is absolutely incredible. And these are procedures that people in that country wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, so my job in volunteering and being there for two days in the operating room with them so I could watch, see the kind of procedures they do, but also move patients from the operating room to recovery or recovery to the operating room. 
And I'll never forget, there was one young man I would push from the operating room to the recovery room. The recovery room, you have to go up an elevator. As I went out of the operating room doors, there was 30, 35 women and children standing there, politely, but they were there because they were hoping that they could get on the list to get surgery because they were scared if they didn't, then they didn't know if they'd ever get the surgery they needed life-threatening stuff. Uh, but I get through them, they're, again, very polite, and take up the elevator, go to the recovery room, and uh, when I got to the recovery room, I'd wait with the child until the child woke up. 80% of the procedures were children. And when the nurse came and the child woke up, I'm in the healthcare business, so I've been in operating rooms, I've seen patients come out of surgery, and usually they're groggy, they're a little pain, they're not very happy people, they're not going to grin at you. But here I am with this, this 11 or 12 year old. He looks up at me and he smiles and he says, thank you. And let me tell you, it's because of him and all the children around the world and other people that Rotary changes their lives. That's why we do what we do. I encourage every Rotary to get an opportunity to see that for yourself, to see how we change lives, how we give hope to people who otherwise don't have hope. That's what the Rotary Foundation does. Our money goes to doing programs like that so we can save lives and help people who otherwise wouldn't get help. Now, on top of helping all those people, the 3,500, they also train seven surgeons in the country. So all those women and children weren't sure they'd get surgery. They will get surgery because they've now been trained. And when they came to Madagascar, they bought, I think it was 65 cases of medical supplies and medical surgical instruments, which they, whatever they didn't use, they left for the local surgeons to use. So now they can continue with those procedures to make them be able to do the things that the country needs. It transformed healthcare in the country. One little program of our Rotary Foundation. That's what makes me proud to be a Rotarian. That's what makes me proud to support our Rotary Foundation and make sure we continue the great work that we do. So again, I close by saying thank you. What you do to help our foundation, to support it with funding, with doing grants, with helping communities, not only at home but around the world, People you'll never see, you'll never meet, and you've changed their lives. Always remember that. You are making a difference. You are changing the world. You may not realize it, but you're doing it. So thank you for having me today. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you.